Well, hello guys, here Mr. G with another video. This time is a question two for grade 11, and we're going to be answering a question, a practice question on a ball's law. I'm going to leave the question in the description below so you can answer the question. The question is a group of learners investigate the relationship between pressure and the volume of an enclosed uh, gas at room temperature. They recovered the results in the table below, and you see a table here, they on one a column they a record pressure and on the other one they record volume. Question 4.1 For this investigation write down the name of the gas that is being investigated. And in this experiment we are investigating the relationship between pressure and volume. That is Boyle's law. That is Boyle's law. If you say Boyle's law you get one mark. The relationship between pressure and volume guys is Boyle's Law. The control variable, control variable is a variable that you keep constant, all right? So what was keep constant during this investigation? There are two important things that kept constant here. And then one of them is the temperature. Temperature. And the other one is the amount of gas. So let's write it here, amount of gas, all right? That is the two one, but they ask for one. So if you say either of them, you get one mark. Relationship between pressure and volume of a gas as described at the first um, three data uh, sets in the table. Okay, guys, you're supposed to know the law. Boyle's law, you're supposed to not say that the pressure of the gas is inversely proportional to the volume of the gas at constant temperature. So we have to say that the pressure of the gas is inversely proportional to the volume. That is the relationship we're speaking about. Inversely proportional to volume. Pressure is inversely proportional to volume. And that, in other words, is the law. So if you say that, you'll get another mark. So far, this question is very good. Calculate the value of x. Now, for Boyle's law, guys, the formula to calculate or to apply Boyle's law is really, really simple. All you have to say is that P1, V1 is equal to P2, V2. Extremely easy. So we use any of the readings there, any of the reading to use for um, X. So for instance, let's use the first one as P1, V1. Let's say 100. 0,33 that is the pressure multiplied by volume 1 is 7,34 equal to P1 is X and V is 6,97 all right so if you do that it just match so this one it gives you 736,422 equal to 6,97x and when you rearrange a x is equal to 7, um, 7, nothing. Three, uh, 736, 736,22 divided by 6,97 and that will give you the answer which is x is equal to um, 105,66 kilopascal very easy and if you do that, you'll get one mark for the formula. The, how many marks is it? One is four. One mark for the um, left-hand side, one for the right-hand side, and one for the final answer. It's very easy to get those marks. Write down the two conditions under which real gases behavior more likely an ideal gas. Behave more like an ideal gas. And that will be the opposite of uh, when the real gas and the ideal gas can or the ideal gas cannot be considered real. So, what is the answer? First of all, the temperature must be high. High temperature. High temperature and low pressure. You must be careful because of the question is the other way around. Write down two conditions under which real gases behave 
like ideal gases. So let me highlight that one in the question. Real gases behave like an ideal gas. So in other words, if a real gas um, or if the, if the real gas have a low temperature and a high pressure, then it cannot be considered ideal. That is the important thing here. That one is a two mark for that one. And then if you say it, obvious you get two marks. You know what that is bothering me. So let's write here. The real gas cannot be considered ideal gas at very low temperature and very high pressure. This one is not the answer of the question. The question is the opposite, but this one is most likely to be asked in the exam. Real gases cannot be considered ideal, and then there are the two points that for sure is going to be asked in the exam. Write down the name of a gas whose behavior is close to that of an ideal under the conditions mentioned, and those will be guys helium and hydrogen. And if you say either helium or hydrogen, you'll get one mark. And guys, this is all. This is all for this question. I hope it helped. Thank you for watching. Thumb up. Uh, subscribe for the channel. Next time, we're going to be solving a question on empirical formula and some stoichiometric, etc. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Mr. G here.